Hey everybody, my name is Patrick and I own McDonald Timing. And today I'm gonna to give you my advice to help make you a faster timer with finish links. So really briefly, it's March of 2021, it's spring break. I've been busy now for two months or so and the last couple of weeks, I've had several people come up to me while I've been timing and ask if they can watch, sit and watch or just observe for a few minutes. And my answer is almost always yes. Uh, and so I asked him, well, well, what's going on? He's like, well, you know, it's usually a person in a institutional setting, you know, they, their school has a camera and they have somebody that runs it, but you know, they, they have three people that run it or four people that run it. And I'm doing what I do by myself. How do I do that? Uh, and so it made me kind of think about things. And obviously there's a little bit of an ego stroke there and I, I, I understand, I get it, but there's a lot, a couple of things kind of at play, first of all. A lot of officials this year have been a little bit off. You know, they've been B plus, and it's simple, simply because they haven't been doing this in the, like the last 19 months or so. You know, they may have done like a few meets before things shut down, but a lot of officials are just genuinely rusty right now, and so they're getting used to it. And I ex experienced the same exact thing. Um, you know, and I, I don't think it's probably been noticeable, but I've had. A couple of issues that have come up where I just I haven't been fully comfortable in the day, haven't delivered the way that I want to deliver. Uh, contractually, things are still t still handled, but I, it's just it's not been as, as as pleasant of an experience as I'd liked. I think I'm past that now, but you know I always say that there's there's kind of a track meet brain that you need to have on, and uh, for a lot of people, like it takes a little bit of time to kind of get fired up again and get get going. So. Um, it, it did make me think about kind of other things though, like how did I get to where I am right now? Uh, so personally, you know, I started timing, you know, 20 years ago when I was in college, literally. And then I got a couple of coaching jobs and at every coaching position I had, we, we were able to get a camera within a year or two. And so I've been doing timing a couple times a year, sound familiar, and it, really created an issue with me like okay i need to make sure that i'm like when i'm called to do this thing and as good as i possibly can be you know so i'd run cables and do all the, the things that you need to do in order to to do the job well um but then as i started to kind of change over and do this a little bit more professionally as, as i started to be somebody that people would literally pay to show up and do this i really needed to make sure that my data was secure and so I made sure that I found ways to, to have kind of a backstop to prevent things from going sideways. So that was the first step, you know, doing things like getting a battery backup, you know, universal power supply, uh, going to shielded ethernet cables uh, to prevent any sort of static shock and to make sure that the data transfer between the cameras and the computers is good. Then eventually going to SSDs and having dedicated timing laptops. You know, laptops that their only job is to do timing. They never go back on the internet. That they are only there to run finish links, basically. You know, things like that made a huge difference in as far as the quality of data that that I could produce. But there was still a limit to the speed that I was able to do things on. Some days I'd be really fast, and some days I'd be a little bit slower. The days I was slow was was not because of me or because of my equipment it was because my images were not that good. That's what it, re it really, really came down to to me. Um, and so I'm gonna link it in the description, but there's a great, I think it's four video series from Finish Links from like you know eight years ago called Taking Better Finish Links Images or something along those lines. And I highly, highly recommend it. If you're doing it just a few times a year, I'm gonna condense it down for you and, and hopefully you, you'll understand. But if, if you're out there like accepting money from other people and you haven't seen this series, you're doing yourself and your clients a disservice. You need to watch it. You need to understand how these cameras actually are, are giving you the information. Um, you know, and I do really simple things. You know, when people come across the line, I literally will look at them and watch them and just go four, three, six, eight, you know, two, one, seven, or whatever it is. Like I will count the, the thing out it, it, just to jar my memory and say, oh, well, I know that this is this. And so I don't have to go back and forth between the identilinks and the, the main image. I don't have to worry like, you know, okay, the person in lane four, the camera's relatively low or whatever. And so and they were running on the outside and they were mid stride. So their feet are off the ground. So they look like they're in lane five, but they're actually in lane four. 
things like that I don't have to worry about. I know where they were, were existing. So that's, that's a, a really short you know, technique of, of trying to cut down the amount of time that it takes to evaluate an image. But really, the most important thing is my images are really good. You know, and there are people out there that have better cameras than I do, and they've got better lenses than I do, and whatever. But I will tell you, I've become very proficient at maximizing the image that, that I have for the camera and the lens combination that I have. And, and again, I don't have like super high level stuff, but the things that I, I do have are producing beautiful images that give me all the data that I need. And I had to think about this too, because there was a changeover after watching some of that video series and, and the things that I, I started to change that made a huge difference. And I'll tell you, the big thing that I did was I moved the camera back from the track. Not everybody has the ability to do that and do it reasonably. But whenever you can move the camera further away from the track, you are able to utilize that lens a little bit better. And I hope that I can under, you know, help give an idea of, of what, what the logic is. And it, it's kind of tricky. But, right, so if you want to take a photo of a, a mountain and you are three miles away from the mountain and you have this beautiful, clear, crisp, you know, open view of the of said mountain, you can get that mountain to be in relatively even focus all the way across. The reason why is it's so far away. If you were to be right up close to it and you take a photo of it, obviously you, put, you would struggle to get the whole thing in, but you would struggle to get it all focused because your, your focal range it kind of narrows as you get closer to the subject. So I figured out, and th th this was helped out sincerely by, by the, the links video link below, is that the further away you get from the track, the further away you can get from lanes you know, four and five, where your main focus of the camera should really be. And then that means that lanes three and six are in better relative focus, and even lanes one and two and seven and eight become in, into better relative focus. So the further away the camera is from, from the track, as long as you have the lens available to you, you can zoom on the lens to get to the, to the space that you need on the track. But as long as the, the, the lens is, is, is there and able to, to zoom to the right level, you really want to be zoomed in as far as you can be, but the camera be furthest away from the track. And there are situations where I understand like it's not going to be most ideal to do that, especially given dark lighting and everything, but hear, hear me out. The logic is simple. If you can remove the camera from the lens, you, you, or from the, from the track, the further back you go, the less change there's going to be in the relative focus between all of the lanes. So that's, that's the thing. Like if you pull the camera back, you can get all the lanes into a much more similar focal range than if you, if you were to be really, really up close to the track. And then you would be struggling with lanes one and lane eight. You might be able to get lane four and five good, but by doubling the distance away from, the, from lanes four and five, you really double the increased value of their, the focus on those outside lanes. So that, that alone made a huge difference in the images that I, I was creating. You know, not having the camera, you know, be two feet away from the track. Like, and, and people ask me, that seems like it's a long way back from the track. So like, I know, but like, I'm zoomed in on the lens, it's okay. You know, when you're looking at the track, you wanna see, you know, all eight lanes and eight fingers for that. And then you wanna have that backstop there. But like, what, what you have is this point to point of, of being available as far as on being on the lens. You know, so these things, this point here and this point here need to get back to the camera sensor. And so it's pretty simple dynamics. You just move the camera you know, further, the lens and, and the sensor further away, and then they become in better focus. And it was a huge, huge day for me. I remember being, um, it, was, it was at a high school event just about 20 miles away. I was like, you know, today's the day. And I moved it back, probably got it 15 feet away from the track, and I was just absolutely blown away at the better images I was able to provide. You know, lane four and five, I got into really crisp, super focused, but then even lanes one and then eight were, were really gorgeous, and it was, it was just better images. Now, there's still some challenges with that. Like, first of all, you gotta have a tripod that can go up in the air further when you pull back, because if you just pull back, you know, <laughs> 
to infinity, basically, then everything kind of becomes stacked on, on themselves as far as in, in that plane. But if you can go up in the air a little bit more, you really can provide yourself some, some extra you know, vision availability. And that's why if you watch any events on TV, you'll see the cameras are hanging pretty far up in the air. You know, they're, they're on stands, or standards, if you will, that are really, really high up in the air. And when I've been able to do that myself, you know, uh, it's, it's been such a luxury, basically. It's really good. And the images are so much clearer and it's so much easier to, to produce, you know, fast imagery because of it. So um, that's really what it comes down to. And then also I use the, the lane tick, you know, marks. I, I maneuver those pretty easily. And if you want to see, uh, at least me acknowledge that, I have a, just a video recently about... Uh, finding the finish line, but you know, making sure that that those lanes are are actually matching on on the left hand side, and I have the the, the lane lines on on both sides just to make tracking a lot easier. Um, you know, but that's really it. I, I create really good images with the the gear that I have, and that allows me to look at those image, images and evaluate them a lot quicker. The one thing I'll say, and I know that there's a tendency to do this, and even at a certain point in time, this was recommended by pretty much everybody out there. Uh, I know it was in rule books and, and that there should be an independent evaluation structure. Basically, there was somebody that was there to capture the image and then the image would be saved and then somebody else would evaluate it. Um, I, I don't know anywhere that actually does this uh, as the, the actual rule because it slows everything down. So even though this was a IAAF and now World Athletics, you know, sort of uh, recommendation, and certainly is a National Federation of High School recommendation, if you do this, it means that results don't get posted for X amount of time. And so I, I don't know, if, and maybe, uh, you know, somebody, uh, I'm thinking about four or five people that might be able to say, oh yeah, this is actually how, how we did it. But, but like at this point in time, capturing, the person that's capturing is also evaluating really quickly. It just kind of makes sense. That's why you can see results going to the scoreboard at the Olympic trials so quickly or any uh, college event that you see on TV. The, the image is being captured and then evaluated immediately. I know that a lot of people are still capturing and then they're trying to save it and then somebody else opens it. But believe it or not, that really does slow down the process, not just like literally in time, but you should, as an operator who's capturing the event, be able to to produce an image where you feel comfortable going through and, and creating an event, you know, the results for it right away. If you're not, certainly that means that the person that then has to evaluate it is really going to struggle as well. So I would say, what's the point in being at the computer and be like, okay, well, I'm, I'm here and I'm watching the race and then I'm, I'm capturing, you know, I got my button or got ACM or whatever, uh, and then I'm gonna save it and send it off to somebody else who knows what they're doing. Like that person should be combined. And if you're not creating images that are good enough to do that, then that's a huge problem. Uh, and you should address it using the information that I've provided you just before. But also you can do the simple technique that I'm doing. You know, who won that race? Lane four, okay. Like even, even if you end up giving it to the person to later evaluate because like, all right, we gotta move on with the meet and you're worried about being slow. Why not start out by saying, okay, I know who won it. It was lane four, four, enter or whatever, click on their lane, enter. And I know that lane three was second and lane seven was, was third. So you know, go through it and see how, how you can do. I bet, I bet that you're gonna be a lot faster than you imagine because you have more information. You have the ability to, to watch it live where that person who's evaluating is probably just there on their computer evaluating and doing their thing. So that's my recommendation to you. Um, you certainly don't have to listen to it, but if you watch this video and you got this far, you're probably gonna listen to it anyway, and you should. And if you watch this video and you're not subscribed, I, I, why have you watched it all? Anyway, thank you for your time. Subscribe, like, and see you next time.